Hi, I'm Nick, the book man, and I've been told that I'm Hong Kong's original hippie. <laughs> Originally from? Born in London, Cockney by birth. Came out here when I was a kid, uh, you know, about three, four months old. My sisters were born out here, grew up over here. Last time I was back in England was about 86 or so, and I thought I should go back and check it out again. Went back for two week holiday and thought, nah, I don't want to stay over here. So Nick is very much a Hong Konger, but he's not from this Hong Kong. He's from the other side that looks something like this. <laughs> It's called Lama Island. In his early life, he was a TV journalist interviewing celebrities who passed through Hong Kong, like the Rolling Stones. Well, they did two gigs in Hong Kong in 2003. Did you go? I went to them both. Oh, no. Got to spend a day hanging out with Muhammad Ali at 74, interviewed Pele. Then in 1984, he got sick and tired of the city and corporate life, so he set off to explore the islands of Hong Kong because believe it or not, there are 263 of them. As soon as he arrived here on Lama Island though, he became hooked and pretty much never left. And it's easy to see why. Came over with a friend of mine, a uh, South African guy with me, said we're having a party, come on over. So came on over, had some really good South African smoke and things. And uh, in the morning, pop, 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 cops turned up, busted everybody sort of thing. We all got away with it and thought, okay, I, I kind of like this place. Lama Island is Hong Kong's third biggest piece of land, sitting just 10 kilometers south of the notorious skyscraper row. The air feels fresher, it feels like a little fishing village. It just completely messes with your mind to be here. Despite being a 20 minute ferry ride away, the two islands could not be more different. In contrast to Hong Kong Island, the natural beauty on Lama feels something like Vietnam or Thailand. It very much has a free-spirited, peaceful vibe and is home to a lot of creative artists mixed with locals. Hello! <laughs> oh. Okay, so there's a store here which is completely self-service. So yeah, honestly, you just put money into the box, you have a little checkout, you can see exactly how much it is, and it's quite self-explanatory. Right now we're walking through some little residential street. Very, very calm. I feel like I'm talking loud right now. Yeah, honestly. Like, you can't keep your voice down. Yeah. It feels a little bit scary. It's prohibited to have any building higher than three stories tall. There's no corporations. The only thing you'll see is an HSBC bank. So this is the only bank on the whole island. Only one. The only one. The only corporation allowed. Everything else is family owned. And even cars are banned. So if you want to get around, then you must walk or bike. I'm from the UK, but I've been living on and off Lum Island my whole life. Population's about 7,000. Um, I would guesstimate about one third are expats or so. I would say it's the most uh, amazing kind of haven for creatives, um, young professionals, hippies. Um, all types of expats end up here because it's so much cheaper than Hong Kong Island, but it's also so much more beautiful. Okay, back to Nick. He was one of the early foreign settlers here, and a lot of the hippie movement can be attributed to him. Today, you can find all sorts of characters from all walks of life who call this island their home. Russians, Ukrainians, Marilyn is Finnish, there's a couple of other Finns over here. There's Germans, Spanish, a lot of French, English, Scots, Irish, Welsh, and Chinese, you know, Indonesians and things. For work, Nick sells books. That's why his nickname is Nick the Book. And I had to get rid of some of my books and started putting them out, and then it came out to be business. People are interested in getting fairly cheap books and stuff. People are leaving, I get first dibs in all their books, so they just drop them off for me. Every single day of the week, he brings his small bookshelf out on this corner of the street to hang out and read his books. These are just some of the books that I come and do and various bits and pieces. I'm more a sci-fi man, horror man. If he sells one, great. If he doesn't sell one, who cares? It just keeps him busy and happy and that's all he cares about. Yeah, but I'm happy, you know, people come and spend 10, 20 bucks or so. Money I use, and that keeps Marilena her cigarettes, keeps my animals fed, looks after a few stray animals around the corner. Nick hasn't shaved his beard since 1984 and when I asked him why, he said, why not? You know, people say, if you shaved your beard off, do you think we'd recognize you? You say, of course you would, because I'd have a two-toned face. This has been non-tan for the last 35 years. I'd look, you know, pasty brown, you know, nice suntan here and pasty white underneath. So, then I found out I had other benefits. Hey, it keeps me honest, which I am basically anyway, but you can't go ripping off people when you're doing moving jobs. He doesn't own a phone, nor even cares. Never I bought two when my wife was in hospital and they both got stolen. So I'm two nil down. <laughs> they cost about two grand each or something like that at the time. You know, we had the money at the time and I thought this is a waste. As long as there's Pay phones and landlines available. I'm not really into the digital revolution that much. Analog is good for me. To me, it's completely bizarre that Nick can live this life far removed from any bustling society when the city of Hong Kong is just a 20 minute ride away. What is one message that you want to say to the world? Keep living. 
save the animals. Without the animals, we got nothing. Keep as green as possible. I appreciate your time. When the video is out, I want someone to show it to you. Okay. You can safely say you will never leave Hong Kong again. Well, probably my ashes will be taken back somewhere else, I suppose, something like that, or just scattered over here, so we'll fly around, but don't really have the bucks to go traveling. Maryland is safe over here and things like that. We both love li living over here. It really is one of the nicest places in the world to be or something like that. Okay, so Kai has told me that we are at the best tofu place in all of Hong Kong. It is so famous. Let's um, get it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm. Oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Move two. Hot cold. Uh, uh, one hot, one cold. Yeah, one hot, one cold. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's a honey glaze on top. Oh, oh. Amazing. Cheers, man. <laughs> Let's try it out. <laughs> Almost like ice cream. Yeah. Great. Right? Like ice cream. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Oh god, that's sweet. Isn't I didn't it? even know tofu like that existed. <laughs> I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.